recently I've been putting some thought into sharpening and the, the setups that sharpeners use and what's required for it and what they need from their setup to, uh, to effectively sharpen. And I was thinking about uh, how much, how much m uh, minimizing that could, could help and how far you could take it. Um, I kept rolling that around in my head and I started thinking about pocket sharpeners and how far could you, could you go with it. Um, looking at different products, I ended up picking up these DMT sharpeners. This is a coarse, fine, extra fine, and extra, extra fine. And I started using these, and I found them to be, they're, they're very effective. Because they're, because they're diamond, they're, they're pretty much, they cut, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter what steel you're, you're working with. Um, in working with them, I, I noticed that the, even the extra, extra fine, the edge that it leaves is very coarse. I don't really care what the, what grit rating it's given. Uh, the edge that it leaves is coarse. So I wanted to take that farther. So I ended up picking up a, a spider coat double stuff with a medium and fine. This is just spider coat ceramics in a pocket friendly package. But I, I'm familiar enough with their ceramics that I know what kind of edge it's going to leave. And I knew that it would be a finer edge than the extra, extra fine. Again, I don't care about the grit rating. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about what's advertised. I'm talking about what you feel on the edge of the knife when you're, uh, when you're using it. At least from the, the type of sharpening that I was doing. So I picked up the double stuff and I was trying different combinations of sharpeners on different steels. Now the other thing I was doing was the straps that I was using... I wanted to make small enough and light enough that I could carry them on me. So these are just little cutouts of wood with different compounds on them. Theoretically, I could carry these in my pocket. I could put them into a, a bag that I took camping with me or hiking. Um, and so the, the, this isn't necessary. It's not necessary to sharpening. With steels like ZDP-189 and m390 and s90v you don't need to sh stop and sharpen halfway through your day but i thought to myself it's a it's a nice challenge it's a nice way for me just to challenge myself and say can you do it how hard would it be what would need to go into it and so that's why i really i took this on to, to see what i could do not to mention things like camping and that kind of thing that this could this could be actually functionally be helpful so main steel that I've worked with is ZDP-189. I wanted to use ZDP because it's kind of a, a a middle steel as far as the difficulty goes. I could have started with something, and, and I experimented with open else first, but very quickly moved to ZDP. I could have focused on something like 8CR13MOV, which is a great steel for learning to sharpen. Um, it's one that I suggest a lot. It, it it really comes along quickly, but it's a little bit too easy for me. Uh, it wasn't realistic for me to be using that and and trying to put that, you know, successfully doing it with that and putting that up and saying, hey, look what I did. It's That's not really a steel that I'm going to carry. So I wanted to make it a little more realistic to myself. So ZDP is what I've been working with. And ZDP, S30V, trying different combinations of the stones, seeing how far I get. Um, for this, I, this video, I documented the sharpening of ZDP before sharpening the knife. I, I made it dull. I cut a ridiculously large amount of cardboard and for the sharpening, I, le I left the knife dirty. I didn't clean it first. I, I figured if you were out someplace on a job where you had to do a large amount of cutting or if you were hiking or camping or something like that, you're not going to, you may not be able to stop and clean the knife. So I thought, let's be fair to the situation and leave it dirty and go into it that way and and any any variables that that might actually be there I said let's let's deal with it I started on the the coarse stone the coarse DMT cuts very fast and these DMTs are fine and I can use them dry you could also use them wet but I was using them dry just to minimize what I had going in my favor um, minimum tools minimum support um, the coarse cuts very well um, didn't take long to apex the the knife to to bring it to bring it to an apex um, after after the course I moved on to the fine side 
I worked with that. It's a decent, decent jumps using these sharpeners. You can feel the difference in grit. For this knife in ZDP, for this sharpening, I skipped the extra fine and the extra extra fine. I've worked with them before. They do fine. There's nothing wrong with them. But I knew with the spider coat double stuff that I could skip them and the knife would, for what I wanted in the, in the end of the sharpening, I knew that I could get it from ZDP. There's some other steels where you really probably want to go through all the, <clears throat> all the sharpeners to, to get to the end point. Steels like S110V, <clears throat> it's not as tolerant to you skipping, making jumps. But for ZDP, it was fine. So I moved on to the medium stone for the double stuff. The double stuff is is good. It's not too heavy. It's it's a good amount of stone. I don't know why Spyderco, they, they just have the stones glued together. And ceramic isn't very strong. I mean, if this is riding in your pocket and it's just a leather case, anything hitting your pocket or, or bumping into your leg, could uh, you could have a problem with this stone, I would think. Now, I don't know how much force it takes to actually break this. I haven't done it, but I wouldn't think it would be that much. And I don't know why Spyderco didn't glue these two stones. Instead of gluing the stones together, put something very lightweight in between them and glue the stones to that. And that why that way, what's in between gives support. Even if it's a piece of stainless steel that is heavily milled out, it'll still give the support that if it, if it takes a hit, it probably won't break. Probably wouldn't add too much weight to it either if it was heavily milled out. But... They didn't. It is what it is. I'm using it. Um, it works fine. Now, the only problem with this is that it loads. And with the DMT sharpeners, you can clean them with just water. I mean, theoretically, you could you could probably clean them off very well in a creek. With the ceramic, it's not going to work. That's not going to work as well. But you could probably get a good number of sharpenings out of these out of this double stuff before you actually really needed to stop and, and clean it off from uh, from the stone loading so I worked with the medium after the fine DMT um, that was fine after working with the medium I moved on to the fine now the extra extra fine has a lower grit rating than the fine stone the fine ceramic from Spyderco I don't care what the grit rating is the edge left from the extra extra fine is more coarse than the fine ceramic and that's why I bought this I mean I, I worked through, I first bought the DMTs I worked with them and the edge was too coarse it was, it was fun I could get it hair whittling after the extra extra fine and going through strops but it was still a very coarse edge and I thought I bet I was betting to myself that the ceramic would leave a much finer edge and so that's what I ended up getting with it I don't know why Spyderco doesn't make an ultra fine pocket stone. I don't know that it's <clears throat> I don't know that it's necessary, but I still I, I wish that they would have that option. After the ceramic stone, I moved on to small strops. This is just pieces of wood with compound on them. I mean, basically, it's once they load, you just throw them away. There's no point in worrying about it. You just get rid of them. It's not like you're making something with leather. Um, and again, I can carry these on me. I mean, I could, if I needed to, I could put these in a pack and I could carry them with me and it wouldn't be an issue. I could, I could put them into a Ziploc bag and put them in my pocket if I wanted to, if I really wanted to push it that far. I was making some jumps through the compounds, but I knew that I could get away with that with ZDP, just like I knew I could get away with skipping the extra fine and the extra extra fine and moving straight to the ceramic. So... It was coarse, fine, medium, fine, and then moving through a series of straps. In the, ed in the end, the edge on the knife came out the way that I wanted it to. It was, it was hair whittling, it was cutting free hanging hairs. The consistency on the knife is fine. It's not a mirror polished edge, but it doesn't need to be. It needs to be a working edge, and that's exactly what I got from it. So... It was, it was interesting to give myself this challenge and see how it came out. Um, I would like to move on to more difficult steels with it and see what happens there. Uh, probably S110V uh, is what I'm thinking just because of the models offered from Spyderco at this point. So, yeah, interesting challenge to give myself and uh, good progress with it.